The new Disney Plus Hawkeye show is coming out soon. Looks pretty good, right? I'm excited for it. But thinking about it got me thinking about Hawkeye, the character, and the various quite different takes on the character we've seen over the years. And surprise, surprise, that got me thinking about Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, because, you know, I've seen the films, I've read plenty of comic books with him in, but I think my favourite Hawkeye has always been the version we see in Earth's Mightiest Heroes. He's gutsy, stubborn, funny, a smart ass, and honestly, a bit of a prick. Because the team behind Earth's Mightiest Heroes created a realistic character. This is how most of us would probably act and feel on a team with mega billionaires, gods, and walking symbols of virtue incarnate. He's defensive and always trying to prove he's just as good and effective as the others, even though it might seem like he clearly isn't. But then I was thinking about MCU Hawkeye, and I think this too is a well-written character, even if he differs in quite a few ways from the 616 character's original brash and abrasive energy, and the spiritual successor to this original Hawkeye that we see in Earth's Mightiest Heroes. And what's more, despite these differences, MCU Hawkeye is also Hawkeye, so I'm gonna argue that these are fundamentally the same character, but for one key difference, one key divergence in their lives. And through an analysis of these parallel characters, I think it becomes even clearer how exactly both characters succeed. First of all though, we need to lay out the major differences between the two. Who are these two versions of Hawkeye? Well, like I said earlier, in Earth's Mightiest Heroes, Hawkeye is sort of a prick. He's good-hearted, he's saved the world and his team like a bunch of times, and he is an essential part of the Avengers, but he's also surly, aggressive, and has quite a short fuse. That's probably why he gets on so well with Hulk, because they're similar characters. This is gonna be good. Yep. None of this is criticism, though. In terms of character dynamics, we sort of need this hothead energy. This Avengers team only really feels complete to me after the Gamma World 2 part of when Hawkeye joins. There's so many serious, earnest do-gooder types like T'Challa, Cap, and Thor, and that's nicely balanced out with the addition of Clint. Turning to the MCU, this version of Clint Barton, of Hawkeye, well, he's kind of a nicer guy, you know, when he's not slaughtering people as Ronin during the blip, but we'll get back to that. From when he exits Loki's mind control in Avengers, to his part in Civil War, he doesn't really display much of that firebrand energy we see in EMH, and indeed in Hawkeye's early comic book tenure with the Avengers. He's more stern and determined, he's got a handful of quips, sure. Clearly retirement doesn't suit you. You got tired of shooting golf? Well, I played 18. Shot 18. This can't seem to miss. But this is the MCU. Everybody quips. But this isn't me complaining about this change, because he sort of has a different role in the MCU and brings a different dynamic to its Avengers. One that we're shown explicitly in Age of Ultron. I'm sure he's gonna be okay. Pretending to need this guy really brings the team together. Natasha thinks she's being sarcastic here, but this is actually the truth. The purpose of the MCU's Hawkeye is to ground the superhumans, the gods, the living legends in the human world, our world. At the Avengers' lowest point in Age of Ultron, when they'd failed massively in South Africa and had their spirits broken by Scarlet Witch and co, they retreat to Hawkeye's farm and meet his family. And it's here, interacting with this family, these children, basking in their familial love and getting a taste of their pastoral life, away from the killer robots and infinity stones, that they are sort of recharged emotionally and spiritually by this encounter with unadulterated humanity. Oh, and Nick Fury, he's here too, talking about rabbits and eating toast. But this Hawkeye is sort of an anchor for the team's superhumanity, reminding them what they're fighting for and bringing them back down to reality. And we see this in his tete-a-tete -tete with Wanda in Sokovia. With this in mind, Natasha's crack about him bringing the team together, it makes sense. Those gods. You don't think they need me? I think they do. Which is a lot scarier. But the thing is, this different dynamic isn't all-encompassing. There are moments throughout where we glimpse the same sort of spirit underneath that we see in Earth's Mightiest Heroes or the early comics. Like the ease with which he's willing to come out of retirement in Civil War, or when he stands up to Stark in the raft. You gotta watch your back with this guy. There's a chance he's gonna break it. 
but the spirit is tamed largely, and it hits a balance that works for the films. Are you up for this? Are you? Look, I just need to know, because the city is, is flying. We're fighting an army of robots. And I have a bow and arrow. None of this makes sense. And I think we can tell the reason for this taming, the reason he's not as aggressive or as eager to prove himself as his counterpart in Earth's Mightiest Heroes. It's insecurity, or the lack thereof. Let me explain. This Earth's Mightiest Heroes Hawkeye, as well as his 60s and 70s inspiration, they're driven by insecurity. That's what lies behind their tempers, their defensiveness, and their refusal to be anybody's punching bag. This interpretation of Hawkeye is hyper aware of his lack of powers, and perpetually lives in secret fear of someone else realizing that he shouldn't be an Avenger, that he can't stand alongside Thor, or Ms. Marvel, or Iron Man. It's not true. He's demonstrated his worth again and again, and none of his teammates actually feel this way, but that doesn't matter. Because all this snark, all this standoffishness and attitude comes from Clint trying to prove to himself that he's good enough. That's why in an episode like Powerless, he seems to take a sort of pleasure in seeing the big three stripped down. Because part of him has been wanting to be able to surpass them, to objectively be better forever. We can't risk placing civilians in jeopardy. Plus, they probably have a better shot at taking down the baddies than you guys do at this point. And I think in the first half of season one, we see the root of this attitude problem. Or at least the reason it's so pronounced to start with. Join us. Join the Avengers. I don't think so. Look how easily the leader took you guys out. I'm better off on my own. It's his betrayal by Black Widow. Because we see over and over, even after he's joined the Avengers, that this has really messed him up. I... You're dead to me. I'm gonna get out of here and make you pay. Do you hear me? I'll never stop, Widow! Ever! She's living in his head, rent-free. The thing is, even though this betrayal shattered his trust, I don't think the reason it got to him so badly was because of her specifically. I think it's the way it caused everyone to turn on him instantly. S.H.I.E.L.D., the Avengers, the whole world, in fact, treats him as a villain. And yeah, he gets his redemption in Gamma World, but I think this abandonment stays with him, and to a degree fuels the insecurity he has about his powers, his strength. What Hawkeye really wants, what Hawkeye wants to prove to everyone else, is that he's important enough, strong enough, for the team to need him. So if he does get framed again, or if something similar happens, he won't be left on his own. I think we see this pretty clearly in the episode Who Do You Trust, when he's accused of being a Skrull. I need to bring you in for interrogation. Those are the rules. Don't touch me! You can stuff your rules, Major. I'm not going anywhere with you. So much for Avengers Assemble. So, deep down, Hawkeye wants acceptance. He wants a place unconditionally. He wants what he thought he had with S.H.I.E.L.D. and what he eventually gets with the Avengers. A family. That's what drives him, and that's what makes him act the way he does. Fundamentally, I think, MCU Hawkeye and EMH Hawkeye are the same person. The difference is that in the MCU, Hawkeye found this family a long time ago, before he even joined S.H.I.E.L.D. As a result, we don't see this same insecurity or the attitude problem it causes. In Age of Ultron, this family reveal is as much a surprise to us as it is to his team, because while in the comics, Hawkeye sort of went through a similar thing, he got married to Mockingbird and they tried unsuccessfully at one point to sort of settle down a bit, this wasn't until much later. The MCU does adapt parts of Hawkeye's origin. His link with Black Widow and his early villainous phase are both present to some degree Degree in the first Avengers film, but they also sort of skipped a few decades. These days, Comics Hawkeye has chilled out a little compared to his belligerent nature and general assholery back in the 60s. He's grown emotionally, and the films pick up on this Hawkeye, and suggest that the reason we're seeing him like this is Laura and his kids. He has that family that EMH Hawkeye didn't, and it's only when that family is taken away in Endgame that we see him sort of lose it a bit. What I want, you can't give me. Yes. 
The thing is, I think Hawkeye also calms down a little towards the end of Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Maybe it's in part a result of the events of the episode which I mentioned earlier, and actually have a whole video on on screen now, powerless. Maybe he feels that the big three, Thor, Cap, and Iron Man, now see his strength, skill, and bravery. I think they always had, but that Clint didn't realise this. So I think if we ever do end up seeing a third season, if we see this show revived, that the chip on Hawkeye's shoulder might be a little bit smaller. So that's the difference between these two Hawkeyes. At least for now, because that Hawkeye show is coming really soon. I'm hoping to get this video out before it does drop, so if you're watching this afterwards, everything might have changed. Because it looks like in the show, Hawkeye might have a few family problems. His place of acceptance might have been taken away. So it's possible, I guess, that his characterization becomes a little different as a result of this. Maybe even shades of EMH in there. But who knows? The reason I chose now to make this video, this comparison, is because this is the point just right before the MCU might really shake up and complicate its Hawkeye characterization. So maybe I'll revisit this in the future. But for now, let me know what you thought of this. Do you also see a deep-rooted insecurity driving the Hawkeye of Earth's Mightiest Heroes, or do you think it's something else? And what are your thoughts on the Hawkeye of the MCU? I'd love to know, so leave them below. I didn't intend that to rhyme, but never mind. I, I just did it again. This is dangerously close to poetry, so I'm gonna stop. This, this video's done. Uh, bye.